show you sort of a more typical uh, management of the disease, which is going to be uh, treatment of a, of a cavernous with, um, with uh, uh, good old fashioned endovascular techniques. Uh, so these are uh, really not, not nearly as sexy, but probably way better in terms of what they do for the patient. And if it were me, I would probably ask for this myself. So 43 year old uh, male presents with diplopia, left sixth nerve, father uh, had a ruptured aneurysm. And so this is one that uh, needs to be treated. It's a symptomatic uh, uh, aneurysm. You can see here um, a pretty large uh, um, cavernous ICA. Actually, it's probably not even cavernous. You can see the ophthalmic, that's our marker. Um, and so we're going to go in uh, with our, uh, this is a biaxial system, so a guide catheter, microcatheter, um, synchro 2 wired, and we're going to go up. And here you can see our microcatheter right at the tip uh, and, and the posterior genu. Um, and we're going to go ahead and cannulate the aneurysm up here under roadmap guidance. You can see here that, that wire coming up. We're going to come around that anterior uh, bend of the cavernous. We're at the ophthalmic. And that's just going to go straight into the aneurysm from here. Um, it's a simple uh, coiling. You know, I think coiling is becoming a lost art. It's very easy to do some of the newer techniques with flow diversion and stenting, but this is still a very good technique. And you'll see here um, that we're able to get really good um, uh, placement of our catheter, stable position, and that's really going to open the door to uh, uh, to be able to create a stable uh, stent construct or sorry, coil construct. A um, little bit of maneuvering, I'm just fast forwarding through this. And ultimately, um, we're able to get a nice uh, basket uh, to form within the aneurysm uh, and uh, get a good coil occlusion. So, you know, just a couple of coils. Um, and ultimately, we're able to see that we've got a pretty good repair of that. Um, if you need to, you can come back and add some additional coils later on. You can add a step later on, but this is going to give a durable solution for the patient. Okay. So that's sort of the mainstay of aneurysm, endovascular aneurysm treatment for the past many years since the uh, advent of the Guglielmi coil. Um, now let's look at sort of flow diversion. And flow diversion is something that um, uh, most people are aware of. We're, we're uh, creating a scaffold under which the endothelium can grow and replummet from the inside out. We are um, uh, also redirecting the flow into the normal course of the vessel. Um, this is gonna help us to recreate uh, it. Here's a 51 year old woman, three prior uh, previously coiled um, aneurysms and presents for elective treatment of another a cave aneurysm. So right at right where it's at the distal dural ring, you don't really know if it's intradural or extradural. And so this is one that you're, you're gonna want to treat to prevent subarachnoid hemorrhage, particularly in somebody who, as you can see, has three prior coils there. So in this case, this is a, a pretty simple procedure for most people and the better the devices get, the easier this becomes. Um, the nice thing about this is you don't have to actually access the aneurysm. So the hemorrhage risk with this kind of a procedure is significantly lower. The real complications with this come in getting the stent to open. And that's where I say having newer devices really helps because the easier it opens, uh, the, uh, the quicker the case, and the less likely you are to have thrombotic complications. So we bring our microcatheter up beyond it, in this case into the M1. At that point, we're able to come up with our pipeline device. Um, and we're really pushing forward, really loading the device in order to try to um, uh, get some forward pressure and get it to open up. There's a little bit of, there's a 15 millimeter um, uh, distal um, wire, and then the stent begins kind of right here. And you can see um, that we're starting to unsheath the stent, get it to start to fluff open. And what's going to happen over time is it's going to uh, uh, get good wall apposition there. We're going to come around the corner into the cavernous segment. Um, and, uh, and once we think we have the stent in a pretty good position, we can really start to push on it and try to load that stent forward. That's going to compress the size of those cells um, of that dense uh, mesh and really give us good uh, wall opposition and uh, uh, really exclude the aneurysm around that corner. Here we're kind of going around with our micro uh, catheter, really banging on the walls of the stent, really trying to make sure that it stays open. Um, and then it's up against the walls. Uh, once we've got that, you can see we retrieve our wire. Um, at this point, um, we do an injection. We see that we've got good apposition and that more importantly, we have flow stasis within the aneurysm here. That's a sign that this is gonna go on to occlude. Um, that's what we wanna see. Okay. So 
treatment of aneurysms, uh, you know, clip versus coil bait is, is, is 20 years old. It's no longer very interesting. And I think uh, it's an ever changing uh, uh, thing, but I think there's a role for both. Okay. Endovascular treatments probably favored in locations that are difficult to access. Posterior circulation is clearly um, a good place for endovascular treatment. Um, elderly patients who tolerate craniotomy poorly um, is another reason to, to look at it. Um, and for patients who have a poor clinical grade. So putting somebody with a, um, a hunt has five uh, bleed through a craniotomy may not be the right thing. You know, you can always, you can always uh, at least temporize the aneurysm. And if they get better, you can come back for more definitive treatment down the road. Okay. Surgery is probably favored in those with wide based aneurysms, particularly in wide based aneurysms that are ruptured. But again, this is something where technology is really influencing that and it's changing as the devices change. Uh, those that have uh, vessels coming off the dome and for those that are severely atherosclerotic um, uh, or have tortuous approach, that, that can be problematic for endovascular and that's probably where surgery comes in. Okay. So that's my brief overview of endovascular. Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.